It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Well, howdy, partner. Here we are with chapter two, lesson number three, the quotient rule. Quotient, what does that mean? Well, calculations that you have been doing for years are these. You've been setting up your dividing step, you've been working out the answer, and we all know the answer is, Ashwari? Yeah, it's 28, good. These three numbers, the 84, the three, and the 28, they are all have different names. Anybody know what we would call them? The three, what would we call that? James. Yeah, the three is the divisor, good. That is the number we are dividing by. The number we are dividing to start with, what is that called? Perfect, good, that is the dividend. And the answer that we get, I suppose we could call it the answer, but the correct word for it is, you got it, quotient, good. Quotient is what you get when you divide one number by another. So, that's what a quotient is, but where does that come into the quotient rule? Well, the quotient rule is used to differentiate problems in which one function is being divided by another. So in other words, functions, fractions, that contain a function of x in both the numerator and the denominator, such as 3x over x plus 4. We can see that one function, the 3x, is being divided by another function, the x plus 4. Yeah. Or cos x, well that's a function, and that's being divided by x squared, another function. Woo! So when we have that, we have to apply what is known as the quotient rule. And the quotient rule is, well again, similar to the product rule, I'm going to use u and v. So if y equals u divided by b, divided by v, so u is going to be one function, v is going to be another function, the way you can work out dy by dx is by, very similar to the product rule, working out u dash, the derivative of u, multiplying that by function v, and then subtracting, rather than adding, we are subtracting function u times the derivative of function v. And then, to finish off, we're dividing that by the function v squared. So note here that u dash is du by dx, differentiate function u with respect to x, and v dash is differentiating function v with respect to x. So basically, your quotient drill is just, if you have u over v, you need to learn u dash v minus u v dash over v squared. Note again, rather than adding, which you do in the product rule, you are subtracting. So u dash v minus u v dash over v squared, where u and v are going to be your functions. u is going to be the function that's in the top, and v is going to be the function on the bottom. Whereas you can mix them up with the product rule, and it makes no difference, you can't do that with the quotient rule. So, let's try some examples. Example 1, differentiate y equals 2x over x squared plus 1. How do we know it's going to be the quotient rule? How do you know that? Perfect, Emily, you got it. You're going to have one function, or we have one function, divided by another function, both in terms of x. So you need to write down u and v. u is going to be the function at the top, so u is going to be 2x, and v is going to be the function at the bottom, which is the x squared plus 1. Differentiate them, so u dash, remember that's differentiating function u with respect to x, so u dash is going to be 2, and v dash is going to be differentiating function v with respect to x, which will give us 2x. To work out then dy by dx, we use the quotient rule u dash v minus u v dash over v squared, and subbing these values in u dash times v is going to be 2 times the x squared plus 1. Take away u times v dash, so take away the 2x times the 2x, as we've got here. And then remember, you divide by function v squared, so we've got the x squared plus 1 all squared. From there, multiply the brackets on the top, multiply the 2x by the 2x, and it'll give us 2x squared plus 2 take away 4x squared. Well, we've got 2x squared take away 4x squared, so we can rewrite that as 2 take away 2x squared. From there, well, don't leave it as that. Take out any common factors. Really, the rule is leave your answer in factorised form. Remember, it may help you to do that uh, later on if you get some harder examples. So factorising the top, you could take out 2 as a common factor. So we've got 2 bracket 1 minus x squared over x squared plus 1 all squared. And then from there, what we can also do, well, if you look at that, what are you thinking for that, Liam? 
You got it, yes, it's difference of two squares because we've got one is one squared, x squared is obviously x squared, and we are subtracting, we've got a difference, so we can write that as two bracket one minus x, bracket one plus x, all over x squared plus one, all squared, and that will be your answer. Yeah! Example two, differentiate y equals sine x over x cubed. Again, for this one, we're thinking it's the quotient rule. How do you know it's the quotient rule, Fiona? Yeah, perfect. We've got one function in terms of x, and we're dividing it by another function in terms of x. So, we need to write down u and v. Remember, u is going to be the function that's at the top of your fraction, and v is going to be the function that's at the bottom of your fraction. And then you can work out u dash and v dash. So here, u is going to be sine x, because that's at the top, and v is going to be x cubed because that's at the bottom. u dash is going to be the derivative of a function u, so differentiating u with respect to x, and remember from higher, sine cos, negative sine, negative cos, if you differentiate you go down, if you integrate you go up. So sine x, if you differentiate it, you end up with cos x. x cubed, if you differentiate that, you get 3x squared. dy by dx, how would you work that out? What would you do? Brilliant, you would use the quotient rule. So the quotient rule, u dash v minus uv dash over v squared. Sub in the different values then. So u dash times v is going to be cos x times the x cubed. Remember, you should really put the x cubed first of all and then cos x. Uh, then you are going to be subtracting the sine x times the 3x squared. Again, I'm going to put the 3x squared first and then write down the sine x. And divide that by function v squared. So you've got the x cubed all squared. From there, what could you do? Well, on the top, you could take out a common factor of x squared. You've got an x squared here and here. Although you've got an x cubed, it's going to be x squared times x. So take out x squared. So you've got x squared times x cos x minus 3 sine x. And on the bottom, if you have x cubed squared, well, remember from National 5, if you have something to the power of something to the power of something, you can multiply those powers together. So x cubed squared is going to be 3 times 2 is 6, so it'll be x to the power of 6. Or if you think about it, it's x cubed times x cubed, same base, you add the indices, 3 add 3 gives you 6. Either way, from there, what could you do to finish that off? Brilliant. You could cancel out an x squared from the top and the bottom. So cancel the x squared at the top leaves us with x cos x minus 3 sin x. And at the bottom, if you cancel out an x squared, well, it will leave us with x to the power of 4. And that will be your answer. Well done. Example three, differentiate y equals sine x over one plus cos x. From there, Adam, how do you know it's gonna be the quotient rule? Yes, well done. You've got one function in terms of x divided by another function in terms of x. So you need to write down u and v and then work out u dash and v dash. So u is gonna be which function? Would it be sine x or one over one plus cos x? Which one, Adam? Sine x, why? Yeah, because that's in the top good. So u is going to be sine x and v is going to be 1 plus cos x. Differentiate then. Differentiate u with respect to x. du by dx would equal? Brilliant. It's going to be cos x. Again, remember this from higher if that helps you. Sine cos, negative sine, negative cos. Differentiate down. Integrate, you go up. Uh, v, if you differentiate that, well, 1 is going to disappear. And if you differentiate cos x, well, that gives you negative sine x. From there to work out the uh, derivative, of y dy by dx, the, well, you'd use the quotient rule. So u dash v minus uv dash over v squared. So u dash times v is going to be this. Cos x times 1 plus cos x take away sine x times negative sine x. And we divide that by v squared. So the 1 plus cos x in brackets, all squared. From there, well, let's start multiplying out the brackets just on the top. So we'd have a cos x plus a cos squared x, and then the two negatives would make a positive, and sine x times sine x would be sine squared x, over 1 plus cos x, all squared. Where could you go from there, though? What would you do next? Anybody remember? Yeah, brilliant. If you look here, you've got a cos squared x and a sine squared x. And if you remember, what is sine squared x plus cos squared, or cos squared plus sine squared equal? It equals 1. Good. Therefore, you can write that as cos x plus 1 over 1 plus cos x, all squared. And if you think about it, well, cos x plus 1 is the same as 1 plus cos x. So from the top and the bottom, you can cancel a 1 plus cos x. So in the top, 
it would leave you with one, make sure you don't just write zero. And in the bottom, if you cancel out one of the one plus cos x's, it would leave you just with one, one plus cos x. And that will be your answer. Example four, differentiate y equals x squared plus one all to the power of four divided by x cubed. For this one, would it be product rule, would it be quotient rule, or would you just differentiate? What would you do? Good, it's going to be the quotient rule. How do you know it's a quotient rule? Because it's a lesson on quotient rule, obviously. But if you think about it, you've got one function in terms of x divided by another function in terms of x. And if you have that, then you apply the quotient rule. So you write down u and v. So u equals, well, we've got x squared plus 1 to the power of 4. That is going to be function u. v is going to be x cubed because that is on the bottom. And then from there, you can differentiate. Differentiate x squared plus 1 all to the power of 4. Well, for that, we need to use the chain rule. So we bring the power down, so the 4 comes to the front. Inside the brackets will stay just as it is, and it'll go to the power of 3. And then what do we have to do? You multiply by the derivative of what's in the brackets. Good, so you'd multiply that by 2x. Good. Uh, tidy that up a bit. You've got a 4 times a 2x, which will give us 8x times by the brackets there, the x squared plus 1 cubed. V dash is dead easy. Differentiate x cubed. You get 3x squared. From there, dy by dx is found by using the quotient rule. So u dash v minus uv dash over v squared. Sub everything in then. So u dash times v is going to be the 8x times the x squared plus 1 cubed times by the x cubed. Take away and then u times v dash. So I've got the x squared plus 1 to the power of 4 times this 3x squared. And I'm dividing that by v squared. So x cubed all squared. From there, well, where could you go after that? Yeah, perfect. What I'd probably do is just tidy it up slightly. So I've got an 8x times by an x cubed, which will give me 8x to the power of 4. I'd probably put the 3x squared first, and then I've got that x squared plus 1 all to the power of 4. And also, x cubed squared, well, 3 times 2 gives you 6, so it's x to the power of 6. Or think about it, you've got an x to the power of 3 times an x to the power of 3, same base at the indices, either way, x to the power of 6. From there, well, you could start multiplying out the brackets, but that'd be very messy, and you'd just get some absolute monstrosity. What should you really do, Sahana? Good, you would factorise, so take out any common factors. Common factors here then, number-wise, you've got an 8 and a 3, mm, can't take anything out there. You've got x to the power of 4 and an x squared, so you could take out x squared as a common factor. Uh, with the x squared plus 1 cubed, you've got an x squared plus 1 to the power of 4, so x squared plus 1 cubed could also come out as a common factor. Putting in the big square brackets, because I'm going to have brackets within brackets, if you do that, if you take that out, looking at just this left-hand side, well, you're needing the 8 still. You'd need an x squared times x squared to get the x to the power of 4, and the x squared plus 1 cubed, you've already got that. So you've just got an 8x squared. Then you've got takeaway, and you're needing the 3, so 3 will go there. And what do you multiply x squared plus 1 cubed by to get x squared plus 1 to the power of 4? Well, you're multiplying it by an x squared plus 1. And leave the divide by 6. From there, if you look at the bit that's in the big square brackets, leave everything else just as it is, but multiply out the brackets there, and you get 8x squared, take away 3x squared, take away 3. But look, we've got an 8x squared, take away 3x squared, and 8x squared, take away 3x squared is... 5x squared! Yes, so you can write that. And I'm just getting rid of these big square brackets now. From there, could you do anything else? Well, yes, you can. You've got an x squared at the top. You've got an x to the power of 6 on the bottom. So you could cancel out an x squared from the top and the bottom. If you do that, you will end up with x squared plus 1 all cubed times by 5x squared take away 3 over x to the power of 4. And that will be your final answer. Last one then, example 5, differentiate y equals x over the square root of x plus 4. Once again, we know we're going to apply the quotient rule because we've got one function in terms of x divided by another function in terms of x. So we're applying the quotient rule. Yeah! What a day! For this then, we've got u and v. So u is going to be whatever function is at the top. So u is going to be x. v is going to be the function at the bottom. So it's the square root of x x plus 4, but we know we're differentiating that, so write it as x plus 4 to the power of a half. 
U dash, well, if we differentiate x, you get 1, differentiating u with respect to x. And if we differentiate v, well, we bring the power down, so we've got half times the x plus 4 to the power of, take one off, you get negative a half, and then multiply by the derivative of the brackets, which will just be 1, so it just stay as that. From that then, going to rewrite that as, well, I've got half, so I've got 1 in the top, 2 in the bottom. I've got x plus 4 to the power of negative a half, so I'm going to move that to the bottom of the fraction and rewrite the power of a half as the square root. From there then, we've got u and u dash, v and v dash. We can sub it into the formula. Say it with me. u dash v minus u v dash over v squared. You got it. From there then, u dash times v. So u dash is 1 multiplied by v, which is x plus 4 to the power of a half, or the square root. We are subtracting u times v dash, so x times by this fraction here. And then we're dividing that by the square root of x plus 4, all squared. It's just function v squared. From there then, well, if you think about it, you've got the x times that. So with x, you could think about that as x over 1. So if you multiply the fractions, just do the 1 times x, you end up with an x on the top there. So that's where that x comes from. Uh, with this bit here, you don't really need to write the 1, so we're just missing that out in the next line. And because I've got the square root and squared, one's the inverse of the other, so they will cancel, leaving me with that x plus 4. From there, though, it's still very, very ugly because I have fractions within fractions. And nobody likes that. So, what could you do? Yeah, perfect. If you take the denominator of this fraction that's within the fraction, well, we've got a 2 root x plus 4, and we multiply all three parts. So multiply that by the denominator, multiply this by the denominator, and multiply the x plus 4 by the denominator, it will cancel the fraction within the fraction. So multiply each of these three parts by this denominator, 2 root x plus 4, as it just says there. Multiply through to eliminate the fraction within the fraction. If you do that, this is what you'll end up with. So you'll have the square root of x plus 4 times by the 2 root x plus 4. You'd have this fraction here, x over blah blah blah, times by the 2 root x plus 4, and you'd also have this x plus 4 times by the 2 root x plus 4. If you do that, it looks very, very complicated when you get to this, but it does become something that's quite simple because we've got a root x plus 4 times root x plus 4. Well, really, we're squaring that then, so the roots and squared will cancel out, leaving me with 2 times x plus 4. If we're dividing by 2 root x plus 4 and we're multiplying by 2 root x plus 4, or well, we're dividing by it, multiplying it, they will cancel out, leaving me with x. So I'd have 2 bracket x plus 4 from here, uh, take away x. And you've got x plus 4 times 2 root x plus 4. Well, the 2 would stay as it is. And x plus 4, you could think about that as x plus 4 to the power of 1. And then this here, you could think about that as x plus 4 to the power of a half. When it's the same base, x plus 4 to the something times x plus 4 to the something, add the indices. So 1 add a half is 1 and a half, or 3 over 2, if you write it as a top heavy fraction. And from there, all you need to do is take the top line, think 2 times x is 2x, plus 2 times 4 is 8, but then I'm taking away an x, so instead of 2x add 8, I'm taking away an x, so it leaves me with x add 8, and the bottom would just stay like that. And that is all five examples. Give these questions a shot, see how you get on. It is 2.3, the quotient rule, that's the lesson you are looking for in the Unit 1 book. It's on page 20, there's plenty of questions and answers. If you still need the workbook, email me and I will give you a copy of the workbook. Good luck.